All right, so this video will basically cover a little bit of the um, use of background images and pixel patterns um, and how we implement them into web comps. So before we get started, I'm just going to review a couple of resources. So um, most web designers are familiar with this resource. It's, um, it's a website called Subtle Patterns. And so you can just search for that or the URL. It's, it's changed a time or two over the years. So um, background images are pretty popular um, and there's a variety of ways to implement them. Um, obviously, if they're actual patterns or textures, there are specific ways that we can <coughs> implement them so that they repeat. So what we're going to do is download this file, which I've already done. Um, so another designer has already created it, so it's set up correctly, which I'll go over in a second. Um, you can search for background images for the web, or for pixel patterns, or for textures. Um, really what you're looking for are um, images that will be tileable or repeatable on the web so that they can be um, loaded quickly and so that they basically tile. So obviously in code it's just a little bit of code that tells it to repeat. On the web what we're going to do is um, actually implement the image. We have to create it as a pattern first. So here's my pattern and the way they work is a designer creates the pattern so technically you could create these yourself. If you've never done it before it could be a little bit tricky. The way it works is on the web we need the top and the bottom. That very last pixel has to be the same. Okay, or maybe the last few pixels. Um, so that whatever the element is needs to be able to repeat um, vertically as well as horizontally. So the left and the right side also need to match up so that if we basically tile these over and over it wouldn't be too obvious that they're separate images. The way we use these in Photoshop though is we would never just sit there and tile them manually. This um, would take us forever. So in Photoshop we have the option to create a pattern. And so to do that I first select everything in my canvas or whatever I want to be a, a pattern. And I go up to edit and I choose define pattern. Pretty easy, right? So we're just going to go through and save it, and you could choose a different name if you wanted to. I'm just going to hit OK. And to actually implement it, we're going to go over to our comp file. Now I've already hidden things like my grid and stuff. Um, obviously I can bring them back at any point. I am going to get the paint bucket, and by default, normally it is set to foreground. So if I change my foreground to black, and there it's going to change to whatever color. In this case I'm going to undo that and choose pattern just so we can see how it works. Now I have a lot of different patterns. Um, a lot of these are like default to Photoshop so I will select the most recent pattern which is at the bottom of the list and from there I can basically make sure I'm on the right layer which is BG pattern and click on my canvas and as I zoom in you can see the pattern. So it basically fills the entire canvas with the pattern. Now what's nice about this is you could technically have layers of different things going on in Photoshop. So I could essentially um, create a little background that's also white. And obviously I might want to pull out my grid or my, my rulers for this, but just for the sake of time I'm just going to eyeball it. And when I go to use my paint bucket this time. I'll change it to foreground and make it white. Notice I'm on a new layer now. And I will just fill this. So you have a lot of options with backgrounds where you can kind of alternate um, if you needed to. You can also um, keep in mind you can th add things like a, um, a stroke. So maybe a one pixel black stroke or a gray stroke. Um, just a lot of cool things we can do. Um, we're also able to use patterns even further in our website if we wanted to. Um, let's say for instance we had a little call out box and maybe part of it we want the background texture to be inside of it. I would have another layer, get my paint bucket, go back to pattern, and again it can be a different pattern. Just obviously make sure you're not making it busy and make sure it goes with uh, whatever your theme of your website is or your style. But we can just basically fill 
a selection with a pattern as well. So it doesn't have to necessarily be the entire Photoshop canvas. It could be a selected area that you choose. Um, it could be like the footer or the header or maybe just some small section within the website if you wanted to have a pattern. Um, so that's, that's patterns in a nutshell. It's pretty straightforward. Again, just select the image and define the pattern. And then the, the option again is just edit, define pattern. And then when you get into your comp file, you can just implement it. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you have questions, just reach out and ask.